Hello and welcome for, to this tutorial on the CGFX uh, shaders and uh, the CGFX plugin and how it's used in Maya. Uh, CGFX is a uh, programming language that's used to create shaders and a shader is a way, uh, is a material you can put on an object to uh, make it uh, look uh, nicely. Now Maya does ship with a lot of shaders uh, already in it but uh, if you're making something particularly for video games or if you just want something that's easy to see in the viewport and that you don't have to uh, render out before you see what it looks like uh, CGFX provides a, a great way to provide these visual effects directly in the viewport. Now uh, before you start using CGFX you have to enable the plugin and you do that by going to Window, Settings, Preferences, down to the Plugin Manager and this is a plugin that ships with Maya. It's not enabled by default, but if it's not loaded, you can just click on there to automatically load it, and you will uh, be ready to use it. So uh, I've already had it loaded because I've been using this plugin before, and now I'm going to give you a little bit of a demonstration of what exactly you can do with it. So I'm going to create a sphere, and I'm going to zoom in and uh, shade it. So right now we just have a regular default sphere uh, and it's shaded with the Lambert material and what we're going to do is we're going to shade it with the CGFX shader. So um, now that we've enabled our plugin we can see the CGFX shader listed right there. So we can click on that to create a new one and by default you get this uh, rosy pink. That means uh, there's currently nothing loaded in it. And if we assign it to our object it's going to show that you no know, rosy pink default color that uh, that shows that there's currently nothing loaded. Well, what we're going to do is load a program, a CGFX program, into the shader. And if uh, you look over here, I've used this text editor to write a CGFX plugin, and I'm it's called the Parallax uh, plugin. I'll describe that a little bit more later, but for now there's a whole lot of code. I'm going to post this on my website so you can take a look and see exactly what's there. But for now, just know that there's a program that was written. And now I'm going to open up the attributes. And this uh, shows you all the attributes for this uh, shader right here. And I'm going to click on the CGFX file uh, box there. Go over to Parallax. That's the name of that program I wrote that I uh, just showed you. Click Open. And now the shader's been loaded, and that program that I wrote has been loaded into the shader. And if I move this out of the way, you can see that that uh, shader program has now been applied to the uh, um, to the sphere. Now we can go back to Lambert if we want by just middle-clicking Lambert. There's an old Lambert back, or we can assign the CGFX shader uh, material to it just by middle-clicking and dragging it back. Now right now it uh, doesn't look like much, but that's because uh, the program expects some inputs which haven't been added yet. So if we go back to our attribute window, just like on the Lambert shader, uh, the Lambert shader comes with all these attributes, well the CGFX shader comes with a whole lot of attributes that I programmed into the CGFX program. So let's move that out of the way. Now the first thing that we're going to want to do to make this useful is add a color to our uh, material because right now it's just uh, showing us a default white. So we're going to click on that and uh, going to click on file. This is the same way they add a texture in a regular Lambert shader and then uh, this that created a new file node so if you look down in the work area and you click there you can see there's a new file load we just added. So what we're going to do now is browse for a file and I'm going to use this image here. It's just a nice uh, color map, it's nice and contrasty. We have this orange foreground and this sort of blue background and just open that. And see as soon as we open that it uh, went into our shading network. There's a file that's piped into the shader. Now the shader Uh, let's just take that out again. 
and is uh, now that program that I wrote over here is taking that texture map in, uh, calculating the color, and putting it on the surface of our sphere right there. Now you might also notice that there's this weird black line over here, and we're getting that because right now the normal information coming in is incorrect. So what we're going to do is back in our going to click on the shader node to go back to the attributes for the shader and we're going to go down and now we're going to select a normal map uh, for that shader. So we're going to click there, create another file, and we're going to browse for the image and let's make that a little bit smaller and okay now there's the uh, normal there's normal map there. If you used normal maps before this is just a regular normal map and going to click open and you see when uh, that happened um, that uh, that new file went into our shading network and that's being piped into the uh, CGFX shader over here and now the normal information on here looks correct because it is reading that normal information from the normal map and right now uh, what we've done is create uh, this is this is your typical uh, shader with a normal map except instead of having to create an entire shader network in order to have a color with a normal map on it uh, we have a single shader that has those two attributes come uh, straight into it right there here's the sample color and the normal map now uh, another thing we can do is um, well actually first of all let's uh, adjust the UVs on that so that oh, click there Okay, one more time. Select the object, create UVs, spherical mapping. I'm just doing this so that it's a little bit more obvious what the texture looks like because before what we we're doing was kind of zoomed out. And just uh, bring that in. It's a little bit hard to see because of all the uh, parallel lines here just click off there, but uh, yeah, I've just uh, I've uh, adjusted the UVs just so that you can see a lot more density here. So now you have a much better indication of uh, the color and the normal map, and you can sort of see that nice sort of bumped effect, so you have that nice relief of the orange sort of wooden foreground over the uh, bluer, softer background. Okay, now going back to our shader node again, we're going to set another attribute. This time, uh, one of the nice things you can do because we were able to program the entire shader ourselves is we can add in extra features like a shiny map. So I'm going to click there. And what this is going to do is going to adjust the specular uh, value. So going to select uh, great mask. Now this is just a black and white map that is uh, sort of black for everything that corresponds to those little orange areas and white for everything that corresponds to those blue areas. So when we click that open, now see we're now applying specular uh, uh, a specular color on the uh, sphere but we're only doing it where that mask is black. So you get a nice sort of shiny sort of metallic effect on the orange bit but it doesn't affect the more matte uh, blue areas. So, I'm gonna. And uh, if you look at here, we uh, can also uh, change the shyness. We can make that a little bit tighter if you want to by boosting that up to 100. That might be a little too tight. But you see how that uh, shininess has really narrowed in focus. Or if you want to make it really broad, you can put that down to 1. Now, that is a much broader, almost uh, almost diffused look. So let, let's put that back to something more reasonable. Let's make that a 10. So it was a 20 before, I think. But you can see that by putting in different values, putting in different values, uh, as well as just texture maps, you can also change um, how it looks going back to 10 there. And let's see, and 
one more thing. Uh, now, so far what I've shown you is uh, pretty standard features in uh, your standard uh, video game shader. It's, it starts with sort of a fawn color map, uh, and then most video games these days like to add normals on top of that, and also be able to tweak the shininess. Uh, there's one other feature which uh, sometimes is used uh, called uh, for fake bump mapping, and it's uh, called parallax. So I'm going to click here to bring in our fourth map. Now you might want to do this, uh, or you might not to, because the effect doesn't always work. But I'm going to click on the height map here, and here we have. Uh, you now, if we were to do a displacement map, uh, what the, this uh, the white areas would represent the areas we want to push out towards the viewer, and the black areas would represent the areas we want to recede. So we're going to open that, and see um, that uh, changed the uh, way the sphere is rendered here. And it, this is maybe not the best model to do it on because you have this fighting lines, but uh, you sort of get the uh, idea that you have this raised area which is has a perspective on it now. Before you were just playing with the normals, but now you're truly changing the perspective. Um, uh, it's a UV trick. It's not actually changing the geometry. So. Uh, this is a really fast way to um, a really fast way to get a displacement-like effect without actually displacing anything. Although uh, that might be a little bit extreme for you, so you might want to reduce the uh, the effect of the parallax down to something a little bit more reasonable. There, that's uh, a lot better. Now you still have that um, perspective displacement effect without it being so extreme that uh, the foreground is separating from the background. So that's just a little bit of extra re realism that uh, in some situations you might like. Uh, in other situations you might want to turn it off completely. Let's put that into zero. So it's really up to you. There it is back to just plain old normal mapping. Uh, put that back up to 0.01. Now you got a little bit of perspective on it. So that is just a whirlwind tour through a uh, simple uh, CG effect shader. This is one that is used a lot. And if you ever want to know how to do it in Maya, uh, this is my explanation. And if you'd like to actually see the code, uh, go to the website. You can take a look at the code and uh, have and make one of your own. Uh, thank you.